good evening, good morning, uh, and good afternoon to everybody. Welcome to the uh, you know the first show of the Spring 2023 Comic Art Live. It's our seventh show, as everybody knows, and uh, these are always fun. I, I like doing these kickoff events on Friday night with the mystery sketches. The you know we didn't we never had a kickoff event until we started doing those, so that's always uh, it's something that I enjoy. And we've got. I think we've got at least six artists in the green room ready to show off what they're doing. But I want to give you a couple of quick updates on the show. We've hit, we're going to hit all the marks that I was afraid we weren't going to hit. I, I know by morning we'll probably have about 5,000 or more artworks available for sale from over 300 exhibitors. So that's good news. I, I, I knew it the last two days, everybody posts uh, the majority of their work. So, uh, you know, we're, I think probably by the, uh, the last art drop on Sunday, we'll probably have over 6,000 artworks available for sale. And I can tell you that there's some doozies in there. Uh, I, there's a few pieces that I'm even contemplating that uh, I, I probably have to talk with Maureen about before I consider buying them. But at the end of the day, there's uh, it's going to be a great show. Lots of great artwork. And, and, and again, we're going to get to see some great artwork being created tonight as part of the sketch event. So uh, before I bring on all the artists, I've got a couple of the reps here with me, both Ken Carson from 4C and Jiggy Cruz from Next Comic Art. Good evening, How gentlemen. Doing, Ken? How you doing? How you doing, Jiggy? Hey, as uh, as always, I, you know these uh, sketch events wouldn't happen without the support of uh, the reps out there. And of course, you know Jiggy and Ken, you've been with this thing from the beginning. Tatiana and Mark as well. They can't be uh, here today because uh, I think Tatiana just got back from Como and Mark is still uh, on the road. But I mean, I really appreciate the fact that uh, you guys work with me on this. It creates a really fun event. Uh, I think the uh, on the second one that we did last November, we sold uh, somewhere around like 95, I believe. And I think this time around we hit about 125. So that's good. I mean, we're hitting, oh, nice. hitting good, but you know, a little bit of growth. We had a few more people buy multiples, which was nice too. So you know, I'm pretty happy about that. And, uh, you know, in general, I mean, I'm always excited to see the pieces that uh, everybody's working on, gets done. And, uh, and again, I appreciate the fact that you guys are doing this with me once again. Of course. And hi to everyone watching. Josh, yeah, we... Margaret, Gabe, Mr. Easy Go Lucky, Mr. Red Jack, Alberto. I, I, I don't know which Captain Americas you're going to get. <laughs> <laughs> Alberto did get a few Captain Americas. I will say Just that. A few. Just a few, uh, right? <laughs> yes. As everybody knows, we were, we were actually going to do a drawing tonight for a uh, free sketch from Dan Brereton. Still got it right here. Not in a bag, just where we can see it. Ooh, yeah. nice. So there you go. It's on nine by twelve, like everybody else's stuff. Um, this was something that he he gave to me, and I was like, you know, I'm going to give it away tonight. So I've got a I've got one of those wheels to spin with 121 names on it. So uh, that's going to be fun to do. But we'll do that sometime in the middle of the show. But um, but yeah, and I you know, and I thought you know, next year or next year, next November when we do this yep. again, I'll probably come up with a few more. Uh, interesting things to put in there as giveaways as part of this. I mean, just to make it more fun and, uh, you know, enjoyable. And this, you know, it's a relaxing way to kind of ease our way into the weekend. And it is a flaming skull. That's uh, Rick Welch. You are fast on uh, the, the emojis. Thank you for that. There is no giveaway tonight, Marcus. I'm just letting you know. Uh, so uh, why don't we bring in the artist, right? Yeah. Let's see who we've got here. We have got uh, Mannix, JP. Hi. John Amore, and we've got Hello. Mr. Bill Morrison and Harvey Toledo. Hey, Harvey. And uh, yeah, welcome to the show. We've got some uh, cams right on the uh, drawing boards and uh, and others not, but uh, thank you all of you for, for helping us put this thing on. I mean, it was, uh, you know, it was, we had, we had a small first showing, you know, where we sold maybe 30 or 40 just because, you know, we were all kind of figuring it out, but last the last uh, November show was just great because we had so many artists supporting the uh, sketch event. And, and this time around we had, I think we've got 40 artists supporting it. So it's, it's, it's great. I think the more artists we get, the more uh, opportunities we'll sell. And it's all about, uh, you know, money going back to the artists. I mean, that was, that was really the, the idea behind this. I had a few artists contact me and talk about wanting to donate art for it. And I'm like, no, it's not for me. It's for you <laughs> at the end of the day. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not doing a great job explaining what we're doing here, but I, I thank all of you for doing this. And Bill, this is it's it's criminal that this is really like the first time that I've I think we've had you on uh, camera here. Is it really? I think so. Oh wow! Um, I'll call the cops. <laughs> well, I could tell everybody that Bill and I did work out that I'm going to be doing an interview 
collective interview with Bill in June. I believe it was the 26th. So uh, about a month. That's right. Ago. That's uh, that, that's I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be fun. Yeah, me too. Um, it's it's interesting being an artist and then also a collector because it really shapes the kind of things you collect. Um, I was I was talking to a guy who's a CAF member who collects specifically Batman. And I've often thought about doing that, like just collect Batman, because that's kind of the thing I'm most passionate about. But there's so many other artists who have never done Batman that I can't resist. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, and, I, and I'll collect things based on a project I'm working on sometimes. Well, that makes sense. You know, I mean, things that inspire. Mm -hmm. So what, what project are you currently working on? Um, I'm working on a thing for Frank Miller Presents that I don't know if I can talk about yet. Okay. So I'll just leave it there. <laughs> and uh, I'm also doing a uh, Usagi Yojimbo retailer variant cover. That's going to turn out it's, pretty cool. Yeah, I so I'm excited about that one. Dang. When's that due? Uh, too soon. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't be here tonight too soon right <laughs> exactly i didn't want to make you feel guilty though no that's all right so uh so what is everybody working on tonight i see uh john i see i, I guess i should probably start uh, showing some bigger screens here i got jiggy in there first yeah jiggy's first there we go uh well here we go what's manix working on got his manix what's that He's got something a... from Tim Burton. Ooh. Oh, oh, very it's, cool. It's Jack Skellington, I think. Yeah. <laughs> very nice. Just getting started. Well, we all uh, love Nightmare Before Christmas, right? For sure. Bill, I wanted to say that JP wanted to do go, wanted to go uh, the extra mile, so he's coloring his mystery sketches. Well, here, I'll swing it over to JP, and we can see what he's working on. There we go. Yeah. That is a black bolt. Oh, my. Yeah. Yeah, this is a black bolt uh, part. So right now, it's full, full of X, but it, it will make sense uh, soon. <laughs> I won't spoil I saw the, the, the concept, and yeah, it, 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 it really is much better colored. Wow. That's uh, that's going to be pretty slick. There, there, you know, and we always say that the artists can do whatever they like, right? Whether mm -hmm. they, they want to color them or if they don't, it's really uh, you know up to them to do what they feel they they want to do with that piece. Now, now, Jiggy, did you end up doing the uh, you know the format that you talked about as far as having the artists yes pick which ones they wanted? I was actually in uh, Hawaii for a friend's wedding, and it was late at night. Uh, we were all in a Zoom call. And there was a, a board with all the characters. So those who attended the Zoom uh, were able to, uh, to choose which ones they wanted. And then, uh, like, for example, John Amor was there, but Robbie, his older brother, couldn't make it. Mm -hmm. So it was up to John to choose for, for Robbie. <laughs> Are they still Look. talking? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was nice about it. Oh, that's good. Well, I, I like that idea a lot, Jiggy, because I just feel like it, you know the artist picking the characters that they were getting versus me randomly assigning them like we did the first couple of times just made a lot of sense. You know, the artists are, are going to pick characters that they're uh, more interested in drawing, and so hopefully that ends up in better uh, better pieces for everybody. Yeah, and then the uh, trades happened during the the session. Um, <laughs> We, we 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 were joking with Miko Swayan and uh, we gave him Snoopy, but <laughs> no, he didn't get Snoopy. <laughs> so you gave him Aquaman if there was one. There was no Aquaman in the in the list, Bill. You should have made one just to see if he. Could. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, that's good. I mean, it sounds a lot like a football draft, right? At the end of the day, yes. people are doing uh, trades as well throughout it. So cool. I'm glad that worked out. 
Manic straight Manic really wanted to do um Spider Ham. So he traded with I, I, for, I forget which which artist. And I also got the Snoopy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, are, are you are you, uh, are you you're familiar with Snoopy though, so it should turn out all right. Yeah, I think it's it's going to be the most challenging artwork I'm going to be doing here. <laughs> yeah, Manix and I met up yesterday. He 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 gave me all his pieces for for Comic Art Live. They're great. They're all great. <laughs> well, that's uh, yeah. I can't wait to see uh, you know the pieces. I got the got some images from Mark and Tatiana today, and uh, and and they're all you know again. Every everybody seems to go a little bit uh, above and beyond for these pieces. So I'm really really excited I, to see the pieces that. Uh, I see know. a comment from Josh Flan. Did did someone request the crotch goblin bill? Uh, that I don't know. If it, I mean, you'd think it would be Anthony, right? If anybody did, but I don't think Anthony bought one. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. We, we had a Goblin Queen from uh, Jason D'Ambrosio. I know that. Mm. Hey, Black Viper of Dorn. No, I did not reveal the Rian Gonzalez character, but one of the characters Rian is doing is Artist's Choice. Oh, my. Yeah. Well, that uh, well, you know that's going to turn out pretty good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Rian doing it, wow. Yeah, everybody's wondering what Rian's working on. Well, we'll see. Uh, Rian is in Japan now with uh, Ellery Santos is there also for, I believe it's called Japan Comic Art Expo. Oh, that's right. That's this weekend. Yeah. Are you doing anything with them, Ken? Uh, we did some stuff with them last weekend for some of the people that were in town. Okay. Yeah, I thought Ryan Benjamin was on, and mm -hmm. uh, I forget who else yeah. I saw on the 4C channel. Yeah, we had uh, uh, Agnes um, Grabowski. Oh, Grabowski, right. Yeah, we had her. Uh, Ryan Benjamin was on, and then a, a slew of uh, Japanese artists that uh, Yoshi represents. Uh, so it was fun. And I oh, hope he has a good show. I want to send him a message. Hope, uh, wish him well. So that uh, starts probably in a few hours for them, right? I mean, yeah, Saturday yeah. and Sunday. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know that we have no shortage shortages of shows or uh, auctions anymore, right? I mean, that's yeah. uh, that's kind of where we're at now. It's now that it's convention season. Yeah, that's for sure. Let's see here. Let me swing John's camera over here. We can take a look at what he's working on. Oh, hey, protecting the smudges. Just working on the Spider Gwen. Very nice. John and I had a debate. Initially, Gwen had a mask on. I'm like, I think more people like it if you see Gwen's face. What do you think, uh, chatters? <laughs> mask on or mask off? <laughs> we also had another debate about how many pigeons there were going to be, and I insisted on seven. And for whatever reason, Jiggy I wanted, wanted seven and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you manage seven and a half, though? That's what we want to know, John. I have a rule that it always needs to be prime numbers. So I managed seven. I, I snuck seven in only. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone says mask off. So uh, I, think, I think you made a wise decision on that one. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a good call. Yeah, Jiggy calls him uh, fair, fair and honest, and uh, from the heart. Yes, definitely. Seven and a half was on the Venom sketch, says NSN. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here, I'll switch over. I see uh, we've got two cameras going for Bill tonight. So here, I'll put the, uh, the board that he's working on there. We got a Captain America. Hmm. I wonder Ooh. who that might be for. <laughs> I can guess. <laughs> yeah, I decided to do a uh, Simpson style Captain America. Um, years ago, I got a call from an editor at Marvel, and he wanted me to do a story for a Marvel Double Shot, which I don't know if anybody remembers that title, but 
every issue featured two stories, like two roughly 11 page stories. Um, you know, just kind of done in one. And they wanted it done Simpson style. And I, they said the only thing is you, we don't want anyone doing Spider Man or the X Men because there's too many Spider Man X Men books out right now. So I couldn't decide if I wanted to do Captain America or Iron Man or Thor. Then I went, wait a minute. All those guys are in the Avengers. Mm -hmm. So I did an Avengers story in which uh, Loki decides he's tired of getting his butt kicked by the Avengers and Thor and the Enchantress uh, talks him into going back to his roots as the god of mischief. So she said, forget all that god of evil stuff. Didn't you used to be the god of mischief? And she says, why don't you, you know, just have some fun once, you know, for a change. So he decides to spend the rest of the story pranking the Avengers. Okay. And, and he that plays awesome. every every classic prank you can think of only on a Loki scale. <laughs> well, I do remember that book. They also had, uh, what was it, Marvel Triple Action back in the day, too, right? Where they had three stories that were probably six or seven pages long. But, uh, but yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, it was kind of a fun book. You know, it gave creators who didn't normally do Marvel stories or, or didn't do, you know, like a lot of continuity. Uh, a chance to just kind of play with the toys a little bit. Um, it was weird because originally when they asked me to do this story, I turned them down because when I found out that they wanted it uh, Simpson style, I didn't think it would be allowed. I, I thought maybe Matt Groening would not be happy that I was doing it or it might get him in trouble with people at Fox or whatever. And so I said, no, nah, I better not. You know, it, it just sounds problematic. And then literally like a week later, Matt came into my office and he said, have you seen this uh, Spider-Man story that Peter Bag did? And uh, I hadn't, but I heard about it. And he, he uh, kind of brought it up on my computer there was a website that had pages from it and uh, we're looking at it and going, Oh, that's really cool. You know, it's all Peter bag style, but it's Spider-Man and you know, it's weird and cool and different. And he said, you know what we should do? We should call Marvel and tell them we want <laughs> to do a, like a, you know, story with one of their characters, but do it Simpson style. And I just started laughing. I go, wow, what, what's so funny? And I said, well, literally a week ago, an editor at Marvel asked me to do exactly that, and I turned him down. And he's like, no, call him back. Call him back. Do it. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> hey, uh, Mikhail wanted to know what is the tool that you're using to ink with? Oh, this is a um, Tombow uh, Fudenosuk. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it. But it's a Japanese brush pen that's uh, very versatile. So you can you can actually almost use it like a regular pen, and just kind of get a real straight line. But it's flexible enough that you can get a nice thick and thin line with it. The you downside is it wears out very quickly, but the upside is it's pretty inexpensive. So doesn't really doesn't really uh, sting too much that it wears out quickly. So you're saying that the the tip wears out of the ink? Uh, the, the tip, yeah, yeah, the tip will get funky, and then it kind of goes into a pile where I use it for, um, you know, when I want, uh, or when I can kind of sustain it, a line that doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but yeah, I don't. I don't know that I've used this brush at all 
to the point where I've run out of ink with it. It, it seems like the trip really... always goes before the well goes. All right. Well, uh, I see Julius is working on over there. I don't know if if Julius can show us what he's working on, but I'll switch over to uh, to him. What's uh, what's on the drawing board? Is that Phoenix, Julius? Hey, Bill. Hi, Bill. Yeah, I'm actually working on Dark Phoenix for the um, mystery sketch. Can you show it in the I'm camera, sure. uh, Julius? Yeah, I'm not sure if you can see the actual work, but here's the um, rough that I draw digitally. Uh, slick. And now you're uh, you're lightboxing it. Is that what uh, you got going on? Yes. Nice. I basically just draw them digitally, then print out, then trace them on a light box. That's, uh, oh, and that's, is that, is that a homemade light box there? It is, it is. I actually hired someone to, um, uh, made it for me. Very nice. Well, whoever's going to get the dark Phoenix, I think is going to be pretty happy. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. And I, and I'll let everybody know, I actually did order a few this time around, everybody. I think, uh, we got four in total. So I had Maureen by, my wife picked them up for me. Uh, she had some that she wanted to get for gifts, and uh, I had one that I wanted for myself. And so, so yeah, I'm I might even get to see mine worked on tonight. Let's see what other screens do I got here? Oh, that's Bill still. I got that's the extra screen. Where's Harvey? Oh, there he is. Harvey. Let me get Harvey over here. Hello, guys. Good morning and good evening. Harvey, do Who's you always? Do you always start with you know that part of the female anatomy when you're drawing something? <laughs> motivation. Oh, you? I, <laughs> I, I think like I've I've, I've done <laughs> I've done Psylocke so many times, and I can start wherever wherever part of 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 Psylocke, uh, Psylocke, um sixteenth body. But in the end, like sometimes like oh i need to focus on on this part of, of the artwork and uh it gives more <laughs> uh, dynamic and impact and sexy and naughtiness and stuff so yeah i i can start for uh, whatever part of it but i think this one will make it better <laughs> i don't know I'm just I'm just I'm just trying well if you don't get them right you can just scrap it and start again right i mean until you get yeah I, I get it i get it uh but so this is going to be a, <laughs> will be a silock is that that's what you're saying <laughs> yes 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 for sure it's gonna be silock so there's like nine silock so i hope someone of the nine silock will have been lucky i don't know i don't know no, it's nine <laughs> i'm just i'm just <laughs> guessing it <laughs> there's nine chests nine chests <laughs> well as uh, as always harvey we got, i love your pencils i've got a few pieces from you and uh yeah you, you do a wonderful job with these <laughs> well josh your eyes are, you, your eyes have nowhere else to go at the moment josh that's that's the problem <laughs> yeah we're, he's getting there he's getting there we got another hour and a half i'm sure we're going to see a lot more of that figure before uh, we get to the end of this. But uh, Murdoch, next time for a Johnny Future. Yeah, it's uh, it's okay. We know it's, uh, you know, we, we kept it open about two and a half, three weeks this time. I think the uh, the mystery sketch slots, but, uh, and, and it always, we had a big rush at the beginning and a, and a rush at the end. So, uh, but yeah. That's we, when it happens, huh, Bill? <laughs> exactly. Everything yeah, works that way. So, but that's okay. I think, uh, you know, the more we keep doing this and showing off the work that's being done, uh, you know, the more we should sell every time we do these. So in November, I hope we let's let's hope we go for 150. That would be a, a nice amount. Stats, stats, stats. And I saw where was that? Somebody said uh, uh, Alberto said, watch Bill mysteriously end up at the Brereton. That will not happen. If the, if my if, <laughs> well, Maureen's name is drawn, I will spin the wheel again. <laughs> so that won't happen. I guarantee it. Love Johnny Future. Exactly. Yeah, me too. Awesome costume. That would mm -hmm. be fun. 
That was Arthur Adams, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I got my first Arthur Adams as a gift yesterday from uh, Nick Patera, a, a Monkey Man and O'Brien page. It was awesome. Damn. I know. That's what I said. So I told him I, I, I buy the drinks when we see each other in person. <laughs> So, uh, most requested character. Well, you know, Alberto got a few of these, so probably Captain America was the most requested character. But after that, I mean, there was there was quite a few Spider Gwens, as I recall, and we got uh, a few uh, Vampirellas, Bill. Vampirella, yeah. But yeah, I could look. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to look at the spreadsheets tonight. But uh, and I didn't really follow what was being requested too often. I mean, I'd scan it just to make sure everybody didn't forget to request something, but, um, but yeah, no, they were, it was pretty varied. You know, there's a lot of variety this time around. I mean, there's a Snoopy this time around, right? So yeah. That, oh, we got a, several zealots too. Oh, okay. Zealot. Uh, that's yeah. a good one. Um, what did I see? Cause we had a couple come in right, right after the deadline. I think we had about three come in after the deadline that were interesting. One, one of the characters I wasn't familiar with, but uh, I passed that over to Jiggy. So I hope I hope you can work that one out, Jiggy. I just we finished can. my zealot. If if we can show that off, is that okay? Oh yeah, let's, let's check it out. Yep. Let me uh, switch over to here. Oh, uh, nice. it's, it's a request for '90s zealot specifically. Very nice. Cheeky little Damonite head. Damonite head. <laughs> No, that's well. They're going to be very happy. Uh, you, you know, you put a lot of work in that. That's great, John. I hope they dig it. Thank you. I'm a '90s kid, so Wildcats and all that, all the image stuff, special place in my heart. '90s or '80s? Are you making yourself younger? <laughs> <laughs> well, I inherited Robbie's collection, and he was collecting in the '80s, but I didn't uh, have an allowance until the '90s. So, okay. The Gen 13s. Sorry, I'm looking through the chat. Manix is working fast. Yeah, I can switch back over to Manix and see where he's at. Oh, yeah. Making everybody look bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jiggy, you've got a few things in, you know, in your booth that we'll be dropping yes. tomorrow morning, right? Yes. So yeah. lots of uh, like, if you're a premium member of CAF, uh, you get the you get the advantage. You want to you know tease any of the artists whose work drops tomorrow? Um, I put in some. Uh, there's a bard, a few bard Mendozas, a couple of Manixes, a Sawi, John and Robbie Amore. <gasps> yep. But we also have the panel, so I'm, it's a, it's a mix. Uh, I want people to visit the booth and go to the panel. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that is true. We have a an, another 9 p.m. panel tomorrow with uh, Jiggy and the next Comic Art crew, like we've been doing. Gosh, it's how many how many of these have we done in a row so far, G? Will this be like our fifth? Um, yeah, probably the fifth. <laughs> I can show one, Bill. Oh, here, yeah. I'll switch over to you here. Ah, very nice. It's a circular canvas. And Manic said that he had a challenging time with the acrylics because, Manic, you want to explain the difference between canvas and the Kadi paper? Zooming yeah. in on Cyclops because for in, Marvel. In canvas, <laughs> you have to use acrylic so it will stick <laughs> to the canvas. So it was kind of hard. Yeah. As compared to watercolors. Spin the wheel, Mikhail says. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I saw Jerry uh, mentioned in the chat that uh, Jerry Bourne mentioned that he went premium, and he did. I just uh, have to update your account right now, Jerry, and you will be premium, and you'll be able to get into the show tomorrow at... 11 a.m. And if you had anything for sale, you can actually create a booth tonight too. 
booth owners can post artwork to the show. You know, you only get to have 24 pieces on Saturday and 24 on Sunday, but um, the uh, Saturday art drop gets cut off at 10 a.m. tomorrow. And if you're posting artwork to Sunday, it gets cut at uh, 10 a.m. on Sunday. So you can post a total of 48 artworks, but uh, you're starting right now that you probably won't be able to get all 24 in there in one day or one evening. So, uh, so yeah, Jerry, you are now upgraded. It takes a couple minutes for it to work though. Everybody's getting called. Sorry. That's okay. That's the one thing about I can mute this phone, but it's still it still surprises me with its ability to make noise. What's G hold number? Oh my gosh, look at that. Whoa. It's machine man. Yeah, so Wait. I requested this from Manix uh my previous uh, shows ago, and he, I said, man, it's, you already have the layout. Might as well finish it, right? And it turned out really nice. Lots. If you're a big Machine Man fan, so many Easter eggs in this piece. Yeah. Just a homage piece to Barry Windsor Smith. Yep. Those eyes, the machinery, love it, says Josh. <laughs> Let's see. I'm trying to swing around here. Uh, why don't we go over to here? See where Harvey's at. Get a little more there. He's moving around. Barry Windsor Smith would be proud. That's true, Mikhail. I have to agree with Scott Wingo, who says that the best investment is uh, getting a premium calf. Well, I can't argue with that. <laughs> uh, of course. I and, mean, you know, I think, you know, like you were asking me earlier, I mean, every year uh, we do end up increasing, you know, the number of people who are premium probably by, you know, anywhere between like 7 and 10%. So that, I'm, I'm happy with that. I think right now, I mean, if I had a hazard to guess where we were at, as of tonight, we probably have about uh, 1,150 people uh, that are premium members of the site and probably another 100 market data subscribers. So that's pretty good. I mean, it definitely helps keep keep things, it keeps the lights on, <laughs> I'll tell you that. Uh, but uh, yeah, so Jerry, I just sent you, just so you know, Jerry, it, it, there's a lot of premium features that most people don't know about. So the email I just sent you outlines everything that uh you know you can you can utilize now that you're a premium member but the one thing you really need to do and this is for all premium members out there is make sure you set up those uh want list keywords tonight because tomorrow before 10 30 we will 10 30 a.m we will shoot out an email to all premium members where there is art dropping on saturday that matches your keywords so you'll, you'll get a jump on you know, on everybody. So at 10 30, you'll be able to see the list of artworks that are going to be available that you are interested in. So when 11 o'clock rolls around and you can actually get into the exhibitor hall, you can pretty much go exactly where you want to go to, uh, to which pieces, which exhibitor booths, those sorts of things. So there are, uh, there's, there's a lot of great art in there right now. And I can tell you that, uh, you know, it is going to be a bit of a mad dash, I think to a certain degree, you know, for some of the exhibitor booths that are there. Um, there's uh, I, I was telling Ken before the show, there's there's a piece that, that I, I might actually pull the trigger on and it'll, it'll be my first five figure purchase ever. So it's a little, little scary. But um, but, you know, I'm going to talk to Maureen before I do it <laughs> so, so I don't get into any trouble. <laughs> Let's see, premium is just worth it, says Alberto. Uh, supports everything, yep, and the community. And that's true. But, you know, I always, uh, early on, the reason we only we even have premium features is because early on people wanted to just donate money to CAF, and I, and I didn't want to take donations. So I just said, well, we'll just start adding on new features and uh, bells and whistles to the site. And then I feel like I'm providing a service. And so that was uh, how premium, premium memberships were born. 
and all the things like the calf classifieds got started and uh, uh, you know, larger images. Sorry, Felix is texting me. I uh, asked me if I can have a call right now. I cannot. Um, but, uh, but yeah, and I see another premium payment just came in too. So I've got to, I've got to go upgrade that one while we're, uh, working here. So I'll switch back. How about I switch back over to, uh, to Bill's overhead here. And, uh, you know, I should say, you know, we always try to get the artworks uh, done and then back to the reps, you know, within a couple of weeks. So, you know, when I, and I'll keep people up to date through the calf updates when I know, uh, you know, some of the reps are starting to send out their stuff. I got the spreadsheets out to everybody um, by Monday. So I know some of the artists uh, have already been working on things. Like I mentioned, I've got some uh, pieces I'm going to be able to show off from. Splash pages, artists, as well as uh, the um, uh, some from Tatiana too. Bill, Bill, your overhead went out again. Yeah, I think I'm running out of power. I'm low on battery. I hate when that happens. Well, here, I'll hide this one, and uh, who can I put in there? Who's got? Uh, some progress. Here's John's got some more work done here. Where does Show the art. I'm getting there, Jason. I'm getting there. <laughs> One thing at a time. <laughs> if you're if you're hoping to see your Goblin Queen, it's not in the previews from the other uh, from the other reps that I've got. I know Jason's curious. I don't know who got Jason, so I'd have to go back and. Uh, dig through the spreadsheets here da, 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 da. but uh yeah all right fine i'll show a few pieces what do we got here I, i've got uh let's see mark hay sent me 10 pieces that were done so here are two from uh, wow. samu uh, i'm not familiar with juan's work but i saw this and i was like whoa <laughs> He, uh, you know, put a put a little extra effort into these, you know, edge to edge, right? Very cool. Yeah, I was impressed. I don't know how many one took on, but um, uh, I mean, they're they're fantastic. So whoever I got was uh, Elric and Starfire. I think are going to be pretty happy with those, right? I don't think uh, I don't think anybody would be disappointed <laughs> to have gotten those targets. Yeah, dang, wow, lots of wow. It's pretty Starfire. Exactly. So yeah, no, these uh, came out really well. And again, I'm not familiar with with uh, Juan's work at all. So you know, that, so that's good. I mean, th these sketch opportunities do help, uh, you know, to kind of raise awareness for artists as well. And I and I, and I really enjoy that aspect aspect of uh, doing these too. Right, I'm not familiar with them. It was with him either. But but again, go over to splashpageart.com, uh, and I'd have to believe that Mark has uh examples already set up over there i don't know if juan's doing um commissions this weekend or not i guess i could take a look over in the uh comic art live commissions set let's see what he's doing i know uh several of your artists are taking commissions this weekend right jiggy yes so check out the booth you can never go wrong with classic costume starfire no no you cannot uh, where is it? Uh, yeah, and Juan is taking commissions this weekend, so there you have that too. Uh, all right, let's see. Sorry, I got another premium payment I've got to take care of here at the same time, but uh, I'll, I can show another pair of pieces here. These are from uh, Francisco Paranzini, and uh, you know, we've got a Judge Death over there looking, looking pretty cool, and a shadow as well. So, uh, both painted pieces those are nice and i think there was another set from uh Aaron as well yeah magic and the wendigo too so edge to edge on both roads nicely done by uh francisco oh and i see bill's overhead is back to working here let me switch over to there there we go 
Yeah, I think I was yeah, having, I was having Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi issues. issues. There we go. I just muted that one mic. I forgot to do that. Oh, so, thank you. Yep, we're good now. All right. Yeah, Peter's happy. How do you know you only did the only shadow, Peter? You never know. <laughs> Hurry up and get John Byrne on here. Uh, says end of times. It would be the end of times, I think, if John Byrne agreed to do one of these. But you never know. You never know. I can ask. I, I, I've never... Uh, Asked Jim about having uh, John do one of these. I have asked him about ha- having John do a panel, and he's turned me down. I've asked him twice, so I'm trying. I'm going to be persistent, and you know, maybe one of these days we'll get him to, uh, you know, at least on for a talk. That would be. I'd be happy with that. Let's see. Sorry, I still got to upgrade this account, or I'm going to get in trouble. There we go. So Maureen has promised me that uh, her first job after Comic Art Live is over is we are going to integrate a proper uh, payment system <laughs> into the premium membership payment so I don't have to do these manually anymore. Because uh, as I always tell everybody every year, it's the last thing I hate is people paying for their premium memberships like right at 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. tomorrow morning. And <laughs> they can't upgrade their accounts fast enough and because uh, everybody wants to get in. They, you know, they realize, they, hey, they can actually be here for the day uh, and, and, and enjoy the show. So if anybody's thinking of doing that, please don't please pay tonight, play, you know, or pay first thing in the morning for your premium membership. Don't pay at 1101. I remember the first comic art live we did three years ago. I had to have had a dozen people pay within that window, like two minutes before five minutes after 11 AM. And it was just a nightmare of trying to you know, and a lot of times some of these people were, were paying and they didn't even have a calf account, you know, and I'm because and, they were new to the whole thing and I had no account to upgrade. And then I have to n- tell them, you got to sign up for an account before I can upgrade you. And so, yeah, first task when this is all done is, uh, you know, Maureen integrating the uh, a Stripe checkout for us. So it'll make life so much easier. And there, I've got that account taken care of. Uh, so here, why don't we see what else we got? I know I've got a couple here, uh, more from Mark. So uh, Damien did a Thor and a uh, Zatanna there. Very nice. Very nice. And what else did we got? One, one more from uh, another set from Damien. That's right, I think. Yeah. So you got a... Nice silver surfer, right? I mean, he's uh, looking. That's pretty nice. I like. I like the yeah the composition on that. Strong. Yeah. Firestorm is pretty cool. I yeah I agree. Yeah, I've seen Damien's stuff before. I, I like his work. And then uh, over to Tatiana. Let's see here. Tatiana came back from Lake Como with a cold. So that's why she is not uh, with us tonight. Let's see. So uh, she sent me something here from Nur Levine and Ryan Odagawa. So uh, nice Mobius inspired piece there on the left and uh, Scarlet Witch on the right. Pretty slick. I think both of those artists were at Como, weren't they? Nur was though. Or is it near? I have no idea. Somebody correct me. Ah, see, now we're getting to see Black Bolt. <laughs> Can anyone guess what uh, Black Bolt, or yeah, what Black Bolt just killed? <laughs> hmm. Did he kill Modoc? I have no idea. It looks like a big eyeball. I see teeth. 
I think the the green should uh, give a clue. <laughs> yeah. No, he just killed the Hulk. That's what it's looking like. Yeah, the purple pants. It's not the Hulk. It's not the Hulk. Oh, not boy. Hulk. Oh, thank right. God. Well, there are pointy ears. Oh, <laughs> is that leader? The leader, right? Is that what he's called? No, not the leader. Is it a scroll? Yes, it is a scroll. It's gotta be a scroll then. Yeah. All right. <laughs> JB, sorry to bother you. The piece that you made for this weekend, is it near you? Maybe you can show the people what you made. Sure. Uh, okay. First is this is, I'll start with my favorite. So one, it's the transformation. A sequential uh, venom. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but this time it's not the MCU type uh, transformation. It's like B movie. Pretty much uh, inspired by the Blob. <laughs> <laughs> I love so it. It's, so it's sloppy, plock plock plock. Not like the MCU version that is so. I like the sound slick. effect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so from here. And to this I like one. that. Yeah. So, and next, actually, this is this is a wild card. Uh, uh, Jake and I were were really we had uh, we enjoy this piece. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so this is just a, a what if if uh, Tom. Because you know what, this is something that uh, you will not definitely see on a comic book. <laughs> because this is so. Uh, is it the crossover uh, you didn't know you needed? Yeah, the crossover. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how much for this crossover? So uh, definitely, I want to see Tom being uh, possessed by by Venom. So that's oh, the. Jerry the is uh, in for a bad day. <laughs> Jerry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so as you can see, it all starts with the hand, and then it will definitely uh, travel uh, throughout his body. And the and the art uh, that's all JP. It's not a it's not a mystery sketch. Like he, he's selling that this weekend on Comic Art Live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fun. And this one. This one's a, 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 a yeah. As you can see, uh, this is really inspired by uh, oh the rain by the coming down. Holy crap! Yeah, that was loud. Yeah. So it's really inspired by the the some skateboard uh, skateboard uh, stickers. So this is the inspiration. And as you can see, this is that uh, Venom discovered love. As you can see, he's trying to make a heart uh, tongue. With his tongue. You can see here. <laughs> yeah, so he just discovered love and it's really hard for him. That's why there's so many saliva involved. Because it's really hard. It's not innate for an alien. So, yeah, that's the story. Venom discovering love, making heart out of his tongue. And lastly, this is, this is my, my favorite. One of my favorite. <clears throat> so, yeah. So, yeah. Took splack. So, uh, <laughs> it's just uh, Spider Man hitting Venom and Venom, all this uh, splatter happening going on and this is yeah of course this is uh pop art it's pretty much inspired by the pop movement so yeah so i'm happy to share all those uh all these uh artworks thank you thanks jp yeah i think you're uh that that tom is going to sell tomorrow in the booth for sure 
Is it tomorrow yeah. or is it a Sunday draft? Maybe? It is, it will be tomorrow. Okay, cool. So Black Bolt's coming along. Man, Manix, are you almost done? Oh, here, I'll switch God over there. damn it, Manix. No, not yet. Damn not it. Yet. <laughs> still have to. It's not that fast. <laughs> I'm still Sorry. inking. <laughs> hey, so uh, let's see. Key JX had a question for everybody in the chat. Uh, out of the blue to any DC and Marvel fans, uh, do you prefer DC Enchantress or the Marvel Enchantress? Hmm. I don't know. We've got one vote for uh, Marvel and one for both. So I, I guess Marvel's in the lead. I would always vote for anything Marvel. So that, that would put Marvel at three to one right now. Thank you for that super chat, Key. We appreciate it. And uh, like Thomas just said, show the love, hit the likes. Everybody hit that thumbs up. We don't have Nick Berucci in the uh, show tonight because he's uh, well, he's probably busy. He did a show earlier that promoted Comic Art Live for the for the weekend. He had uh, several folks on talking about what they were going to be bringing to the show. So if you missed that, you can go back and watch uh, Nick's one hour show. Probably the last half of it, I imagine. I didn't get to watch it myself. I just knew he had six or seven. Uh, exhibitors showing off some stuff that they were bringing and talking about what they were bringing to the weekend. But, uh, but as you know, Nick's the guy that tells everybody to hit the thumbs up. So do that and you'll make us all happy. Josh Robbie, is I'd like next time, John stay off my mystery sketch list, but Robbie next time you should join the draft. <laughs> yeah. 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 That is right. It's not my fault. You're an absentee, uh, next comic order. <laughs> <laughs> I actually didn't know that there was a DC Enchantress until Cara the Suicide Delevingne, Squad movie. Right, yeah, from exactly. Suicide yeah. Squad. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like we have more. Uh, I'd still say we've got more Marvel votes than DC. So that's, uh, that's, that's at least where we stand, Key. Throw in the shade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, that's coming along awesome, Manix. Thank you. And if you enjoy, uh, to all the chatters, if you enjoy me throwing shade at my brother Robbie, you can watch the VOD for his and my interview on Comic Art Live on the channel. That is true. That is very true. That was fun. We gotta have it you guys back on again. Yeah, that was, I had a good time that night. That was we had a good uh, group in the chat, and uh, you and your brother were awesome guests. That was a fun episode. Thanks. So we got a rocketeer going here, Bill. Yeah, I'm just playing. I think I'm gonna do more of a maybe a full figure flying shot. I'm just trying to remember how the helmet goes. So you don't have like a computer monitor in front of you or something to pull reference? Uh, sometimes I do. I don't tonight. Sometimes I like to test myself and see if I can actually remember <laughs> without. He's definitely got something rocketeer in it. No, uh, studio somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Red Jack says that uh, Robbie and John should get together and sing uh, anything you can do, I can do better. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that would be fun. Let's see. Uh, Black Viper Adorn says, uh, if John has any more done on the Zealot, can uh, give a little more time on. Let's see. Uh, where is John at with his uh, latest piece? There's actually uh, not much more to do on this. Just sign it. But yeah, happy to share it again. That is looking slick. at this piece now. Looking at this piece now, it makes me think about um, Harvey's process uh, when he draws. You know what he draws first? Uh, how many Power Girl or Vampirella commissions he gets? 
considering he draws chests first. <laughs> Where do you start, John? The, the, the heart. The heart sometimes. The uh, soul. The soul. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Hey, that's that's a good answer. <laughs> Yeah, that turned out really well. Thanks, guys. Let's see where Harvey's at, if he's gotten past that. Uh... Oh, there we go. I'm walking now in the faces. I'm in the face of, 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 of Silac. It's kind of like blur. So I'm putting like a lot of tape, if you can say, like a mask and tape, uh, so that the paper will not fall back on, on the table since the table is like 45 degrees from from the flat surface mm. so from the animation uh who does a lot of animation they always make the paper like this so that the figure of the human person will be as close as so uh perfect a uh, perfect viewing unlike if you're gonna draw on the flat on the flat table sometimes um it's very tricky it, your eyes telling that it was good but when you when you do the paper like this and uh, the figure is kind of like longer legs, longer nose. So it's been a problem for a lot of animator back in the day. So that's why they make like the 45 degrees uh, table uh, to make a better um, like structure, no stru structure of the figure. So yeah, now I'm doing the face uh, of that with the... With a important figure, <laughs> I mean important part <laughs> for now, and the face will take longer. Sometimes it's gonna take like twenty, thirty minutes. Just keep going back, back and forth. Mm, so yeah, that's that's our process. I like Harvey. I like your uh, motivational text on your drawing table. It says "Beat yesterday." Oh, it's from uh, I think it, it's from Garmin. So it always reminds you that um, the 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 enemy or, or or the other you is your is your uh, yesterday is your enemy like something like that. But yourself, like that. yourself. So yeah. <laughs> so by beating yesterday, you can do better like every day. So yeah. And I'm doing a lot of experiments. Like last last night, I'm kind of like late. Like I'm talking to Jiggy around like one 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 a.m. in the morning. I was like, oh, Jiggy, okay, man, good night. See you tomorrow. I was like, no, I can't sleep. I I, I go back to the table after thirty minutes and kind of like draw this. Uh, this is gonna be for tomorrow. Hopefully, it's still it's still it's tomorrow. So, Anakin in a very, very uh taheko Inoue style like the slum dunk artist. So it's like different from what I do. The faces oh, I've been spending so many, so many times on the face. I'm sorry. It's Grievous there next to you. Can you show General Grievous? Oh yeah, I have Grievous here. So I'm done. Yeah, so that will be available so, this weekend. Yeah, it's like this will be for tomorrow. So yeah, it's just just having fun, exploring different type of approach and layout and stuff and. Through that you will discover more and like yeah it's i always tell like that's that's a, that's not your comfort zone so but go there go there like discover it like you might find something that you you're not truly really do like i've been watching a lot of frank quietly lately and um job darrow so you can see the 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 faces the eyes that you can see that that's a job darrow and 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 frank quietly's so rendering of skin so yeah, I through that you quietly. will just yeah discover more and um uh, yeah it's always been exploring I'm it's I, I like I'm I'm seeing uh, one of the artists like a friend of mine from the states like I need to stop drawing like there's no reason to draw and like he's really good like he's really really good and he said like oh there's no there's no value in drawing anymore and I think I think they the artists sometimes forgot that we're doing this for fun and. It's just that we have audience and a lot of people are buying our commission and stuff. But in the end, we're doing this for fun and people forgot it. They thought it was an obligation or a work that you need to do. Like who in the world just drawing in their 
table and people paying their 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 food, their rent, and everything that they have to do. And uh, we're lucky. We're all the artists uh, in the industry are very lucky to have a comic art fans and next comic art that we can showcase our artwork. But in the end, we're just having fun. And uh, yeah, thank you for all the people who've been watching us every day. And uh, yeah, I owe like I owe all my things to to the audience and the people who bought the comics. So yeah, this that's my well said. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> It's really inspiring to hear Harvey always. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Harvey missed you yesterday. We were supposed to hang out with Mannix. <laughs> oh yeah, we uh yesterday was um like like one of our family came here from Jensen. So oh. yeah, it's yeah, it's always nice to see your yeah, family and nice. um touch back for a while and uh yeah, so it's it's um, because a lot of art, artists lately I've seen in, in the post, like they stop because like no one cares what they do, like they stop because no one appreciates what they do. But in the end, like I think they never had the chance to talk with their family, like their biggest fan is supposed to be their family. Like, yeah, sorry, I dropped my mic. <laughs> sorry, yeah, like they 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 dropped the mic, dropped the mic. Yeah, we do that every Wednesday on Dueling Dealers, right? Dropping the mic. Um, you know what we should do right now? <laughs> Dropping my mic. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. We're about halfway through the show, and uh, why don't I spin that wheel and we figure out who's going to get the Dan Brereton piece? Oh, let's Oops. do it. All right, let's see if I can share the screen here. I mean, you can't read any of those names on there, but there's a lot. Uh, Alberto, I, one, like two, say, three, four. <laughs> yeah, they're not, and they're kind of grouped when the orders came in. So you can see Gabe's on there a few times, and Alberto, and uh, I know Maureen's in there. She's got a few. But uh, everybody's name, uh, you know, each time you purchase one of these, uh, we put your name into the list. So you can see Bargain Shop had a few. Uh, another one from Gabe Carino in there. Some, some people picked them up at odd times. Wait, ain't quite, quite, not quite. You see me, like... Quiet, quiet, see my light. So, uh, so yeah, there's uh, what do we got? What's the number on here? I, I know I used to say, it. I think it's 121 uh, individual names on the list. So, here we go. Oh, yeah, up there, 121. So, here we go. We'll see, we'll spin it. And as long as it doesn't land on me, we've got a winner. What if it lands on you, Bill? <laughs> <laughs> the, the fix is in it. Just missed Jason D'Ambrosia. Winter. winter Powell. All right. Congratulations. Congratulations. I don't wow. Yeah, you know, Winter out there, but she's a regular on the show. So yeah. uh, that's awesome. All right. Yeah, Jason, you missed it by two. I saw your name right there at the end. I saw it too. Look at that right there, Jason. And then David Valcourt. Oh, look, Peter Rowe would have been next. Philip Rutledge. So uh, Winter Powell. Right there. Salt down. on the wound, Bill. Salt on the wound. <laughs> I was hoping it was going to be my wife. I mean, that would have been fun. Uh, but uh, it is what it is. So congrats to Winter on that one. I'll hide the screen now. And get us back on the other format. There we go. So let's uh, let's check in on where uh, Mannix is at. Right. <laughs> What's that? A rig. <laughs> Alberto, you had almost a like a 6 or 7% chance to win that. It really did. Uh, but I promise everybody, next time we do this, I will have more than just one thing to give away. It was, it was really last minute, and uh, you know, I, I I should have thought it out better. But next time around, I'll make sure we have like you know five, six, seven, eight, something like that. We'll have a good number of uh, things we can give away. But now I can actually think about it for six months and uh, maybe pick up some other pieces of art, commission a few people here or there, uh, you know, just to keep it fun. Yes, uh, but yeah, no winner is not in here tonight. That's okay, though. She'll be happy. Margaret was rooting for Alberto, too. <laughs> uh, and this is turning out great, man. Look at that. Tim Burton would be proud. I believe Winter picked something up from me uh, yes. last time I was here. Yes. Oh, cool. That's true. So, 
chatters, if you pick something up for me, you have a better chance of uh, winning one of these uh, giveaways. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Hey, zero. I didn't know it's zero. Cool. Nice one, man. What did I miss, Jimmy? Jiggy? Zero was in the in the piece. Oh, uh, right at the top. On, yes. Uh, on Jack, yeah. Sorry, I saw Bill was doing a different take on uh, Rocketeer. The Rocketeer. Yeah. Yeah, I think I like this better. This is just my prelim. So after I get the drawing worked out, I will transfer it to a board. Bill, do you keep all your prelims? I never throw anything away, as Ken will tell you. Hmm. <laughs> so really yeah, nice. I. Yeah, uh, well, let me let me um, stipulate. I I generally keep all my prelims unless it's something super embarrassing, in which case I will shred it. Like if I if I have that thought where I think someday somebody's going to put this on the internet after I'm dead and it's going to be super embarrassing. Jeez. I know I get kind of morbid sometimes, but well, you know, if it's if it's career damning, I, it's probably a wise thing to do. I just can't imagine that happening too often, Bill, with the work that you uh, you know with the projects that you have. I mean, maybe this Frank Miller one, maybe a few of those you might. Uh, have to set aside, but uh, you know, <laughs> from, the, from all your Simpsons work and other things, I just can't picture something that would be uh, career uh, defining in the wrong way. Well, I, you know, I've, I've done the Simpsons and Futurama for so many years that that's pretty ingrained. So generally, the prelims aren't, you know, terrible. But whenever I'm sort of going outside my comfort zone, they can get pretty bad. I will I will confess. guys. What's the last piece you shred, Bill? Uh <laughs> gosh. It's, it's right here on the space. floor. Uh <laughs> you, you gonna show it to us? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Uh, well, well, I, I think it was for the um, Frank Miller job. I was right. Because uh, it was it was working out a new character mm. that's never been drawn before. And, you know, so I was just trying to kind of figure out what it should look like. And, uh, you know, the first couple of attempts were not great. So I didn't hang on to those. EC, can I suggest something? Uh, the commission should be death by snoo snoo. <laughs> <laughs> Did everyone see the? They uh, actually announced that Futurama will be coming in July. Wow, I didn't know that. No, is the is the whole cast coming back? Yeah, the whole cast. It's going to be on Hulu. Even John. Even John. Interesting. Wow. Yeah, I, I talked to Billy West down at Fan Expo in New Orleans. So that was several months ago. And uh, I asked him how it was going. You know, how it was going with the new episodes. And he said, well, we've already gotten recorded. Um, so they moved really fast. And now, though, I don't know if they're all dropping at once, like Netflix, or if it's Hulu. So... How do they how do they normally do that? Do they have like one per week like HBO does or I'm not sure. Anyway, um, yeah, so the first they're they're gonna have ten new episodes. Whole new season. So it'll be in July. Uh, and uh, they they kind of hinted at what some of the storylines might be. They're gonna pick up threads of things that were sort of left hanging out there. Um, so yeah, it's going to be exciting. I miss Futurama. It's 
So do I. Uh, let's see. Where can we swim? Maybe we should check and see. Uh, Black Bolt. <laughs> uh, we'll go to Black Bolt. Let's go over there. <laughs> Not much left to that scroll. Yep. Uh, Harvey mentioned a while ago, uh, Jeff Darrow. Uh, this mm -hmm. piece is pretty much inspired by Jeff Darrow. <laughs> It's a homage. Uh, if you remember the cover of Hard Boiled. Hard Boiled. Yeah, so this one is pretty much inspired by Jeff Darrow. I also love Jeff Darrow. <laughs> Jeff is really great. Uh, when we were first doing Trias of Horror as a comic book, we still had a mandate at Bongo to do everything quote unquote on model. Right. So we would, wow, when we man. launched Trials of Horror, we decided let's get some guest writers. But the idea of having guest artists didn't really, I don't know if it didn't occur to us, but we didn't really think it would fly um, because we were, like I said, under that sort of mandate to make everything yeah. look just like the TV show. And so we did the first couple of issues that way with guest writers. And we had Mike Allred and Jeff Smith. Lipa. Um, who? What was that? I think uh, somebody, somebody forgot. Mike yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, anyway, we, you know, for like about the first three issues, we just had guest writers. And then. I was talking to Jeff Darrow at Comic-Con and we started talking about the Simpsons and he was telling me what a big fan he was. And I said, have you ever like thought maybe you'd like to do a Simpsons story or, mm -hmm. you know, and I was thinking as a writer, you know, and he's, he's, you know, he came from animation before he got into comics. So he said, Oh man, I would love to draw something for, Simpsons. And I said, well, what about maybe a trios of horror? And the initial conversation was that he would do a pinup. And mm -hmm. he, because he came from animation, he said, you know, send me the model sheets and, you know, I'll nail it. I'll get it right on model. And wow. I said, well, you know what, Jeff, if you're just doing a pinup, uh, I think your fans are going to want to kind of see how you do the Simpsons. And I was sort of taking a chance, but I thought, you know, for a pinup, who's going to really care? You know, I don't, I don't think I'm going to really get in too much trouble for just a, a pinup if it looks off model or, you know, funky. Um, but anyway, I sent, I sent Jeff the model sheets just so he would have reference. And he did this two page pinup that is basically a story in itself because it shows the, uh, aliens from Rigel 4, the, you know, Kang and Kodos, um, invading downtown Springfield. Hmm. And it's got, you know, dozens of characters, and it's like this great overhead shot. So you're looking down at the street and tops of buildings where people are, you know, doing various things on the building roofs. And it was so good that Matt Groening came down to my office and he said, we should do this more. We should like let artists draw as well as write for Trios of Horror. Awesome. So from that point on, it was an annual uh, kind of party where we would just invite these guest artists and writers to do whatever they wanted with the characters. And we had some of the... I mean, like the who's who of the comic industry worked on that book over the years. And I don't know if anybody's seen the new Omnibus that's out, but it just got nominated for an Eisner Award. Wow. And if you haven't seen it, pick it up. I mean, it's got Bernie Wrightson. It's got Gene Colan, Al Williamson. Um I forget who's all in this volume because there's going to be three volumes ultimately. 
Um, but Jeff is the one that started it. You know, he's the one that kind of opened, kicked open the door for other artists to just do their own styles with the characters. Well, there is a Jeff Darrow uh, Simpsons piece on calf. I saw NSN mentioned that there was, I'll, I don't know if this is the one or not. Are you showing it? Yeah. Is that the one there? Wait. Oh, how did I, I got kicked out of the studio. Hold on. Let's see. It says I'm backstage, so I'm not able to see anything. Huh. Well, let's see if I can uh, share it one more time. Bender's in that. You don't see anything on your screen anymore, Bill? Oh, here we go. Oh, this one, uh, this was done later. This was for, we did two, two issue series of uh, Simpsons meets Futurama. One was, mm. they were both crossovers. One was Simpsons Futurama and the other one was Futurama Simpsons. They were both two issues each. And we uh, did a collection, a hardcover collection with Abrams. And we had a 16 page gallery in the back of uh, artists just doing pinups. So this is uh, this is the pinup from that one. So that's why it shows characters from both series. Mm. The coolest or kind of the most, I don't know if it's the coolest, but the most interesting thing about that book is one of the artists that we got to uh, participate was Alex Ross. Wow. And instead of doing a Simpsons Futurama crossover pinup, he did a Radioactive Man and Fall Out Boy painting. And they're not even in the book. <laughs> <laughs> They're not in the story at all, but it's still, it's kick-ass. It's really good. I actually own the original to that one. Nice. Did it come into the office or did you just have, had to have it? And you, you, you can't talk about it? <laughs> no, it was just uh, sent in. Nice. But Gene Cohen did one. Uh, really? Yeah, he also did a, a Treehouse story. He and Marv Wolfman did a parody of Tomb of Dracula called The Sub-Basement of Dracula. And Gene called me one day and he said, do you have any like three-dimensional versions of the characters that are in the story? Because he said, what I what I like to do is I like to light three-dimensional figures so I can see how the shadows would work because I'm not that familiar with the characters. So I kind of want to see how they look with a lot of light and shadow. Um, so I sent him action figures. I sent him like a whole box of action figures and tried to find like all the characters that were in the script. And uh, that's what he did. He like put them under like a hot lamp and took photos of them in different positions, but, you know, to get that, figure out how the light would play on those um, designs. Yeah, I'd like to see a Gene Colon uh, version. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, well, it's in that book, and it's in, uh, if you want to get the original comics, it's in Trials of Horror number 11. Okay. Write that down. Yeah, that's that's a good issue to get because that one it's a double issue and it's a flip book. So one half of the book is um like 70s era Marvel and DC. So it's Len Wein and Bernie Wrightson doing a Swamp Thing parody, and Marvin Jean doing a Tomb of Dracula parody, and then the other half of the book is an EC pastiche and we got Al Williamson. We got John Severin. We got Angelo Torres and uh, Mark Schultz also worked on the art. I'll see if I can. Oh yeah. That's the uh, pinup 
that Je the initial pinup for Trias of Horror that Jeff did. Wow. Yeah, it's the biggest image I can get from it, though. But uh, yeah, it's <laughs> pretty slick. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that, that's amazing. Yeah, it's it's such a killer piece, and uh, I mean, how could Matt not look at that and go, "Yeah, we got to let people have some more fun." Dang. I mean, it's it's fantastic. Yeah, it's it's pure Daryl, right? The way he would draw a, a seat a street scene like that, right? <laughs> Gosh, but it's also it's on not... model. Wow. What's that? It's perfectly on model still. Yeah, he really did keep it on model, but he also gave it his style. You know, it's got exactly. that thick outer line with the thinner inlines. Um. So yeah, I mean, he, he, it was just the perfect piece. And then from that point on, it was like Matt only had two rules. He said, you know, the characters, they can be done completely in the, you know, whatever the artist's style is, but they still have to have the bulgy eyes and the overbites. Because he felt like that that was sort of like the essence of the characters. Like as long as that was retained, you could do anything else to them, and they would still look like Simpsons characters. Well, that is uh, that's awesome. When was so? Oh, this has been on cap for a while. This was added in two thousand seven, so it was a while back. Yeah, I think we did the book around two thousand five, maybe. No, no, no. Wait, that issue would have been. I'm thinking of I'm thinking of number eleven. That was number four. So that would have been like 1995. Um, I'm gonna have to bail, but I want to show how the Captain America turned out. All right. Yeah. Let me swing over to yours. Here we go. Oh wow. <laughs> I'm kind of jealous. That's that's awesome. Well, thank you. Well, I hope uh, it, this is going to Alberto. I saw Alberto said in the chat that uh, he saw a few caps the last time we did this in November, and they didn't go to him. So C Cap is a popular character, but uh, he is. Yeah, uh, this could be for you, Alberto. We don't. I, I can't confirm it. Ken could confirm it. <laughs> I, I can't. <laughs> well, this has been fun. Thanks, everyone. Bill, uh, Thanks, we Bill. appreciate it. Yes, uh, I, I'm looking forward to seeing the other ones completed. Thank and you, Bill. Having you on the chat on the 26th of June. Everybody should mark your calendars. Bill will be back on 26th of June. I think that's a Monday at 9 p.m. We'll have him on for an interview. We'll be talking about his uh, his art collection, and I'm sure we'll be talking about his art, too. But uh, thanks again, Bill. Hey, thank you, Bill. Thanks, everyone, and have fun this weekend. Thank you. You know, we haven't looked over here at uh, Julius in a while to see how far his, his inking has gone. Hey, Julius. How's things coming along? Hi, Bill. I'm actually almost done. Here you go. Oh, sorry. Here, here it is. Go. Oh, wow. That is nice. Thank you, Bill. Wow. Uh, Somebody's going to be I'm sure there were a lot of Phoenixists requests, Bill, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if I were to look, I bet you we had probably five uh, Phoenix requests for sure. I'll set up my camera better next time. So <laughs> I'll make sure you can see the drawing. I'm drawing live next time. <laughs> All right. Well, we do them again in November. The uh, second weekend in November. I've already picked the dates. I think it's like the 11th and the 12th. So we'll do it that Friday again. And uh, yeah, no, that's like very nice. How many? Uh, how many are you doing, Julius? I, I, I forget how many you uh, you had requested to do. I'm actually draw, draw, I'm doing three. Okay. Solomon King, Dark Phoenix, and who's that third one again? G, Gwen, Spider Gwen. Uh, Spider Gwen. Yeah, Spider Gwen. Oh. Julius, can you show the Gwen pool you made? If it's there. Oh uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit. Since uh, we're dropping that for Comic Art Live. 
Yeah. In your booth or on the show tomorrow? This will be in the booth. Okay. But Julius will have... There Unless you want it in the claim sale. <laughs> hey, it's totally up. To, it's all up to you. Wow, look at that. Nice. That is I'm really inspired one. by all my fellow artists. My fellow artists work, especially Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna ask you, Julius, who inspires you the most? Yeah. <laughs> or, <laughs> oh, now you're asking them to play favorites now. Oh no, yeah. Bill! No, uh, you guys. Julius and Harvey were yeah. uh, neighbors. Are those your friends? Yeah, yeah. Tell me. Are those your friends, Dad? Yeah, those are my friends. Actually, I owe um, <laughs> my, you know, part of my drawing skills to Harvey because actually Harvey trained me to draw, especially female characters. I was actually, yeah, yeah. you always start in the same spot as him. <laughs> Not that part. <laughs> I actually draw the faces first. So when if I don't like the face, I just <laughs> scrap the drawing. <laughs> yeah, but you know, for those who didn't know, and for those who for those who wants to um, no, actually Harvey is the one who. Sorry, sorry, my son is here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So actually, Harvey was the one who taught me how to draw mostly female characters. He has been pushing me since ever since I was I was starting out back in 2011. He always tell me to Jul 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 draw this character, uh, especially Frank Cho. I always remember that one. Yeah. Frank Cho was my um, what do you call this first um, influence in drawing female characters. So I owe RV everything, especially drawing female characters. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Well, a, a good yeah. person to uh, to learn from, certainly. Yes. Well, that's uh, cool. So we'll see that in the booth tomorrow. Is that is that correct? Yes, Jean? sir. Okay, I'll have to tell my daughter that, that uh, it'll be in there Saturday or Sunday because she's a big Gwen Poole fan. I didn't name her after going pool though. <laughs> uh, let's see. Well, speaking of Harvey, we'll see where he's at. Ooh, almost there. I think I'm on the side blade, side blade hand of Psylocke. But yeah, it's. I've been doing it so many times that I could start anywhere, anywhere from from this character. Like yeah. Oh. Yeah, me and Julius grow up in the same um, the same town. We are from the southern part of the Philippines uh, in Mindanao. So we both grow together. Uh, we both expose on like anime and stuff. So we both expose from comic book. And I remember Julius of uh, a friend back in the days that have this X Men comic book. And um, I've never seen X Men and Spawn comic book way back. And I think I've seen the Spawn and, and X-Men from, from Julius, like, um, yes, this cousin or some, some stuff that have this um, comic book. And we both grow together in comics. So, yeah, it's, I think comic, comic is very, like, you both guys grow together and you, you guys both learn each other and sharing what you have. And by the end of the day, you guys, you guys, getting better and i think that's that's what comics and and group are and i think we are very lucky to have the the next comic art team and um yeah it keep pushing forward uh, no matter like i never think mostly enough of like the budget and stuff like jig is also like, uh, this is the the range of this one and stuff and like i go farther and farther like i go beyond with it because by the end of the day it's like i'm also a fan like uh, if i receive something like so good like it would inspire you to collect more it would inspire you to to get from different artists because they, they, they work hard on it and that's always been my 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 things and stuff to my co-fellow artists like we need to work hard on it because people collectors never just take their money uh anywhere from from the ground and stuff like they work hard also on it so we need to work hard on our face and by the end of the day it's a win-win uh both both sides uh, all the collectors and all the artists and it's dual 
edged sword for the artist because you can showcase your style like oh this is how you're gonna do venom this is how you're gonna do silak this is how you're gonna do um this character and then a lot of publishers are watching our facebook these days so when they say like oh let uh, let's see how he can draw simpsons and when you get draw a lot of simpsons stuff like you're you're gonna always be the first choice people will like oh this guy is is it's it's a uh, it's a good artist for you guys to watch for it so yeah it's uh for the artists it's always been a dual edge sword uh even though some artists will take no no one will get me uh, my artwork sucks like I have the ugliest Psylocke in the world. In the end, like your ugliest Psylocke is always like someone will love it. Someone will 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 always like like um like pressure and appreciate your work. Like Alex Nino's work is like weird, like the weirdest stuff in the whole world. But his weirdness when it comes to the US, like the best weird in the world. So some somebody will maybe someone, some editor or art, other artist like uh, Alex Nino's work like weird, but in some other artists and editors, it's like the best in the world. So yeah, just yeah, I just keep digging. I don't know where it leads, uh, where it leads me, but yeah, that's that's how a process would do. Keep improving and exploring. Yeah, I I, I would put a vote towards Alex Nino's work being a little weird, but I always liked it. But uh, you know, I mean, it, it's. Every you know, art is subjective, so you, not everybody's always going to like what somebody else is, you know, likes. So we talk about that a lot uh, on the channel. You know, it, some people will be like, you know, the, why does that person collect that artwork? Well, you, you know, they love it. That's why they collect it. So you can't, if you just because you don't like it, doesn't mean it isn't uh, it isn't good stuff. So uh, very very true. Now, is John working on something new? I can't let's switch over here and see. Oh, he's back over to the. Uh... Yeah, I'm taking a short break from the Gwen Stacy piece to just do this six by six Megatron, Sweet. just to loosen up a bit. No, I'm gonna take off too, buddy. All right, Ken. Well, we will uh, see you tomorrow at. Uh, oh my gosh, what time is it? Six o'clock is your panel. Six o'clock. Cool. Yeah, we're doing the Wheel of Deals uh, show with Anthony. Um, Wheel of Deals tomorrow at six, everybody, with Anthony Snyder. So uh, we'll see if and, Anthony. And I'll comes. tell you one thing, um, um, Anthony. I'm going to play Anthony for a six thousand dollar cover. Is he really going to do that? He's going to do it, and I'm going to do it too. So. Oh my gosh! Well, uh, <laughs> that that's going to be worth watching. You know, just for that alone. Uh, Anthony potentially uh, giving up a six thousand dollar piece, so that'll be interesting. Wow! <laughs> yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah, well, that's all right. He'll be, but he'll be dancing around like a crazy man if he gets it. So, uh, well, there you go. So six o'clock tomorrow, everybody. That'll be an art buying opportunity as well uh, with the wheel of deals with uh, Ken, mm -hmm. and uh, I assume Jeff will be there too. Yeah, Jeff will be there. He'll, uh, I, yeah, I'll, I won't be on the show much at all. Jeff will be he'll Jeff be doing all heavy lifting. Yeah, sure. I got it. You'll be flipping all the the levers in the back, but uh, cool. <laughs> That's right. All right. Well, thank you for uh, again for doing this, Ken. I sincerely appreciate it. I know uh, you know it was great having Bill on for the first time. Who uh, who were the other three artists that worked with you on this one? I know Alex Saviak was one, right? Alex Saviak, uh, Nick Varela, and uh, Ron Wilson. And Ron Wilson. That's right. That's right. Sweet. So uh, keep me posted on, on uh, you know, on, on the work, you know, send me, uh, you know, photographs or scans when you get them in too, and I can share them on like, next week's cap update, that sort of thing. So Great. awesome. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. Thanks, buddy. See you then. See you, Ken. Take care. A new song from Sharon. I don't know about that, Marcus. Uh, he did do it. She did do a new song the last time, didn't she? The whole... Uh, uh, when she shaved Anthony's head, so I don't know what they're doing on on uh, Sunday. I mean, Anthony is back for his his show on Sunday, but he and I haven't talked much about what he's doing. But whatever it is, you know, Anthony will be hamming it up like he always does, and we love him for that. Uh, let's see. Oh, look, uh, Black Bolt looks like uh, they're getting a little closer too. There we go. Using a uh, receipt from uh, the local Starbucks as your 
Hmm. Yeah, from the office supplies. Office, <laughs> <laughs> office school supplies. That works. So the ink will not smudge. Yeah. I RV. Like the, hey, uh, JP, I like that you mentioned that you, know, that you, uh, you kind of aim for that skateboard sticker kind of feel. Because I always looked at your work and I'm like, I know I know this work, you know, the, the, kind of the style from somewhere, but I can never place it. I'm like, what the heck is that from? It's like graffiti. It's like, uh, you know, but now that you said this, uh, you know, it's a skateboard kind of uh, influenced style. Now it now it makes so much more sense to me. But, yeah, uh, um, pretty so much. Cool. I'm pretty much influenced by the skateboard from by comics with the X and Edroth. Uh, what else? Uh, Ratfink. I really love the mm. the hot rod art. Uh, I, I'm really mm. influenced by by those uh, by those artworks by those artists. Like I really the, love uh, drawing the 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 hand, the screaming hand, Santa Cruz. The yeah, I think it's Santa uh, Cruz. Yeah, yeah. I so okay. pretty much in, influenced by those sensibilities. Bill, I don't know if you know. Uh, JP and Mannix were block meets in college. No, I didn't know that. And uh, yeah, and we were yeah. also bandmates. <laughs> yeah. That's why a while ago when Harvey's talking about their friendship, it kind of reminds me of my friend also. And my friend now is a my friend now is a uh, popular artist here in the Philippines, and we are that close because we circumcise uh, get circumcised together. Who's That's this? How close we are. <laughs> and in, in, this is not a doctor circumcision. It's a barrio kind of the no. barrio oh, thing. No. Oh, the name of my friend is Ricky. Uh, Manix, <laughs> you, you also know Ricky, right? Yeah, yeah, I remember him. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Th th that's how close we are. Uh, Wait, how about JP, you, Harvey? The... And then you chew guava? Yeah, it's like uh, yeah, yeah, we're gonna yeah, do the yeah. circumcision in Easy. the river. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we just paid the, the things just, I learned on this channel. We just paid the 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 circumcision man. I don't know what's the what's the English term for uh, albulario. The, Let me check. The fuck doctor. The fuck doctor. Yeah, uh, the yeah. fuck doctor. <laughs> we, we, we will just pay them with uh uh cigarettes a uh, pack of cigarettes and that's it mm. so how about you uh harvey so you uh you also have a circumcision I, experience with someone. i wish I, 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 <laughs> I, I wish we have that that kind of circumcision <laughs> but yeah yeah we oh have uh God. I thought you, would say you were just having you know a hard time figuring out the word you wanted to use but now now i know differently but uh yeah <laughs> glad i'm standing for this uh this took a weird turn <laughs> well, Maddox, tell us how, how, you know where you're at with this thing look at i didn't you know look at all the detail you're putting in that tree holy mackerel yeah wow. i remember uh you were talking about alex nino he was also one of my inspirations as a kid so i put um some horror elements like alex nino style <laughs> Very nice, Manix. Wow. Very nice. How do you think Alex nice. Nino was circumcised? If, uh... <laughs> Maybe also I from think... the barrio, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think also the, bar the barrio system. Uh, barrio system. <laughs> that's the way how they did it during the... When was he born? 60s? <laughs> yeah. Just to take it back. Oh, boy. And, uh, hey, I just saw that... Uh, I remember there was a question earlier for Ken, and I texted him about it. E EC was curious if Bill Morrison uh, has a commission uh, list open, and I see that Ken answered that in the chat just now, saying that uh, Bill's commission list will be opening very soon. So, EC, if you uh, if you don't follow 4C Comics, uh, you can do that on their uh, Facebook page, or actually their Facebook group. So, I would, if you aren't already doing that, you should do it over there. Because I don't think Ken sends out emails for PR. He he does everything through Facebook, so that would be the place to do it, and uh, or watches 
shows on YouTube too, but uh, I think following the Facebook group would be better to know when Bill's opportunity would, would be available. So uh, Jiggy, a question for you though. Uh, a lot of the artists are taking commissions this weekend too? Yep. It's Good. all in the booth. All the details are there. I do want to say that Mannix and I talked last night and people who get a, a Mannix piece will be uh, entitled to a... Mannix will be making a, an A5 piece uh, as a giveaway. So you have a one, 1 in 12 shot of getting that one. That's uh, not bad odds. That's a little mm -hmm. better than Alberto's odds tonight for that. Uh, <laughs> piece. So uh, sorry, Alberto. I'm sorry. I don't mean to. to yeah, that's it's a source. And I, I love the fact that uh, people in the Mannix Club keep welcoming one another on calf. <laughs> I read on. I read the comments. Oh, when somebody gets one and that they've joined the club, that's yeah, and that's great. Alberto is the the latest member. Oh, yeah, well, that's right. That's uh, yeah, that recent piece. That's very true. We got to see that uh, not too long ago. Now, um, what was I going to ask you about the? Uh, gosh, see, I'm. I'm I'm too taken by the piece that uh, Manix wor is working on right now. <laughs> totally forget what I was going to ask. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> the um, yeah, I've totally w went blank now. I think I, I think I've hit the witching hour for myself. But um, let's see. Uh, Peter says, "Bill, would you be able to uh, say which characters your family asked for uh, at, at least one Spider Gwen?" Yeah, no, there's a Spider Gwen. I did ask for a Thor. I will tell you that, Peter. Uh, that was that was mine, and uh, and there were two other ones though. I'd have to go back and look and talk with Maureen. So, but uh, but yeah, my I told her I had a I had to have a Thor. So after that, I don't I can't really say. Oh, who did we lose? Oh, Julius. So he's moved his camera. His camera. Yeah. There we go. Can you see my drawing now? Yeah, let me uh, go full screen here for you. Let me drag it over. There we go. Ah, there it is. <laughs> I switched my camera into a laptop so American see the join, please the join. Let's see if you can see it. No, that's uh, that's perfect right there. Okay, I'll just continue drawing this one, this piece. It's almost done. <laughs> Uh, hey, E.C. Harris, I do know that uh, one of Tatiana's art artists got uh, yours, and uh, I'm not sure why I know that. The, just the old school Deathlock was the uh, character, and I remember um, we had a, we had somebody actually cancel their order, and I had given Tatiana the list, and I had to give her one more, and so I slid that one over to Tatiana's list, and it was yours, so... I do know that. What characters uh, does Maureen like? She likes. She, I hate to say it, Alberto. Maureen is a huge Captain America fan. I think one of the Captain Americas that you saw and thought was yours was uh, Maureen's from November. I hate to say it. Um, I could probably dig out her portfolio and, and show you, but she might have actually gotten two. I can't remember. But one of them was hers. There was one that had uh, Zipatone on it. It, it. I'm sure Alberto remembers that one. That one was Maureen's. Uh, what else does she like? Um, Gwen's big into Iron Man, actually. Iron Man, Gwenpool, and uh, Spider Gwen. I mean, I don't know. It has something to do with her name, I guess. But, uh, you know. Julia, sorry, could you mute because there's an echo? Oh, oh yeah, sorry. Thing? Yeah. Thank you. There we go. ML has a question. Where does Manic stand on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Funny you say that, ML, because Manix and I discussed that last year, Manix, like we should do yeah, like a... I love Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> the OG uh, red, yeah. red bandanas for all of them. <laughs> uh, Alberto, that's not true because uh, the one that uh, Maureen got was shipped from Tatiana. So we did, I did not get the ones that Jiggy uh, sent sent here actually. 
Um, that, so that wasn't true. But, but Jiggy, remember, Jiggy picks them all. He has when I get the the set from Jiggy that I have to mail out, they're uh, they're all pretty much labeled who gets what. So I have no say in which pieces go where. But uh, but sometimes oh, it'd be no nice. Worry. To make it. <laughs> don't worry, you'll be happy with your uh, Captain America. I guarantee it. There we go. And and what we know they're all going to end up on calf. And we'll do an unboxing again, right, Jiggy? Yes, for sure. Yeah, those are fun. I know you trust me, Alberto. We got to keep it lively here in the chat. We got about uh, 15 more minutes to the show, too, because uh, at 11, 11 o'clock for me, I, I've got uh, to double check some stuff with Maureen to, to make sure we're all set for the big keyword uh, email that goes out in the morning and it's actually not a keyword email you're going to get an email premium members will get an email that will tell them if they got matches to their keywords and in that email there will be a link that takes them back to calf and on calf they can run their filters on the uh the matches to their keywords so that's uh, that's how it works I've already. Been, I, I swear, I got at least a dozen emails today from people sending saying, "Are you really going to send the uh, the keyword emails?" Yes, we definitely are, and uh, everybody because I didn't realize how much everybody relied on those. It, it does give you a you can sprint to the art when you have that. So I'm going to be sprinting to mine. And Peter Rose says he updated his keywords yesterday. Good. Everybody should do that. It's uh, if you're on CAF and you don't know about it and you're a premium member, you just go underneath the your account and collection menu and go to what is it? The sixth link down in there. It says your comic art want list. And that first section, the want list email alert keyword section is the one you want to update. Premium members have 20 slots that they can put in with different keywords in there. Fill them in. I mean, you'll be happy for tomorrow. But the thing is, those same keywords actually alert you. Uh, within minutes of artwork being added to a site like Jiggy's or uh, any of the other sites I host, like Alberts and Mike's and Anthony's and Felix, I mean, you name it. Uh, when art is added that matches your keywords, you get an email within five minutes of it being added. So that's how the dealers sell uh, sell out really quick, is uh, these keyword matches to premium members. Uh, yeah, Margaret. Uh, has said that uh, the emails are so useful, it's not even funny. It's true. I've found a few pieces that way myself. <laughs> Alberto says he has to beat Nick to the Mazzuccellis. I wonder how many Mazzuccellis are in the uh, are in the Comic Art Live this weekend. I could tell you. I mean, I, usually, I don't think we've had too many in the past. Uh, let's see. That's another guy who should do some Simpsons, Mezzicelli. That is true. There are two pieces by David in uh, Comic Art Live this weekend. One very expensive and one not so expensive. Oh, man. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, yep, uh, that was a good one. Uh, let's see here. Peter Rose says, I have to admit, I'm cash poor from a recent auction. I bought three Joe Kubert covers. Well, that, uh, that would do it. That, <laughs> that, would, do it yeah. that would thin the wallet in a hurry. I mean, even if they're five to $8,000 covers, that's, uh, that's a lot of money to fork over. But I'm sure they're beautiful. Well worth it. Congrats on that, Peter. Definitely. Oh, man, let's see here. Uh, we can, who haven't we looked at in a while? Let's see where uh, Harvey's at. Getting closer. Doing the Actually, it was, it was done, <laughs> but I need to put like a um, concept on the back again, like a, like a, a little bit, like a samurai mask, like silver samurai something. So, yeah, it's already done, but Harvey yeah, I think this is my here. problem a while ago. I can't stop. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What is it? Yeah, when is it actually done? You gotta just, done. Like, you have to turn it over and not look at it when you think you're done. Or you're going to keep noodling at it. All 
Oh, number one Marvel fan knows which one. Yeah, he's the one, the, the more expensive Mazzucchelli piece was Dino's. That is true. Not ridiculously expensive, but yeah, it's uh, it's up there. It's, but it's properly priced. It looks like to me. Oh, Margaret's giving all our secrets away. Which which keywords she uses? <laughs> And it looks like uh, JP's getting closer on this one. So Jiggy, you know, I saw, you know, we had a couple people early in the the show actually ask about, you know, are, you know, is the mystery sketch thing still open? Um, it's probably it's okay. you're the boss, Bill. I know. Well, well, I was, uh, I, I'm actually kind of was going to put a question out there about November. I mean. Maybe we could, right? I mean, leave it open a little bit longer, um, just up until you know the end of the show. You know, let people know that because yeah. now they're you know they're getting to see the quality of the work that's being done. So for some people who were on the fence or something, and then they see us working on these, or not me, I say us, like uh, I'm having anything to do with this, but uh, you know they we, they see the pieces, and then we could we could keep it you know open until eleven a you know eleven p.m. Mm -hmm. tonight, right? We just cut it off at the end of the show. And I can, uh, you know, anything that we get at that point, I can, you know, meter them out to, uh, you know, you and Ken and Mark and Tatiana. And uh, pick up. yeah. All right. Well, let's try that in November. I think that would be fun. And, you know, again, I think seeing is believing, right? Because nobody really gets to see any of the pieces until tonight. So, uh, you know, they hear mystery sketch and they and, you know, people get a little nervous. We know that. Right, Jiggy? It can happen. Mm -hmm. So, um, so but yeah, now if you've seen this and you saw the examples that, uh, you know, Mark's uh, artists and Tatiana's artists did, uh, they should know better by now, Alberto. I know, but there's a lot of new people. I mean, I've seen like two, two or three new faces in the chat tonight. So, uh, you know, it is, it, it makes sense. So, so the artists present now, um, are actually taking commissions later. So do stop by the booth. Like JP's ready for commissions. <laughs> yeah, that black bolt's awesome. <laughs> I hope the guy, uh, the person who, who got the black bolt, will be happy with this one. I would like to think so. But, uh, but yeah, you is it okay if uh, if I show the ballistic Jiggy? Yeah, yeah. is one of yeah. the. Okay, go, go for I it. I think it's. The usagi. Oh yeah, I can I can also show the usagi. I think yeah yeah both both I can both show them. Uh, Are these this is the ballistic. Or, uh, so this is the ballistic. I don't know if you guys kind of like see it, uh, but. Yeah. Yeah, so the ballistic is like <laughs> I'm I'm um I'm very inspired of Michael Turner. I think Michael Turner is one of the reasons why I'll, I'll I'll draw comics, and even the signature is kind of like Michael Turner <laughs> on it. So yeah, uh, but there's a new style that I'm I'm like also like wanted to to go into the like the heavy rendering and stuff, but still you can see in the piece that there's like um. Uh, Barry Michael Turner in it, uh, Mark Salvestri in it. So yeah, those are like the people who really inspired you to like to draw. And this is like the ballistic. And this one is going to be out for tomorrow and for, for, for our event. And this is the Usagi Eugene book. This one, I, I kind of like go crazy, crazy on it. So Harvey so, drafted ballistic first and then chose uh, Usagi after. Damn. Oh, uh, yeah, I think. Yeah. Crazy work. <laughs> so up, maybe like after watching the the Travis Sturz interview with uh, Mark Vellar and uh, Frank Whiteley, yeah, after that, you're going to go like more explore. Like they always keep telling you that um, you need to like do better every day. So, yeah, this is how you come up and end up. So and I've never done Usagi before, like. Never done uh, Osagi piece way, way back. So, yeah, it's a new style. There's like a uh, different approach. Like, I'm 
wonder if it's gonna be ink. It's gonna be different. So, yeah, it's a pencil art, and this is Usagi. That's it. Thank you. Arvid, how long does it take you to draw this? I always wonder. Like five minutes or oh. six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's always take like the like the whole whole day. And the concept is much more difficult than the drawing. The the concept of like what you're gonna do on the background, what you're gonna do of the if the if there if there's gonna be wind, if there's gonna be like an arrow hitting him, like there's like two arrow hitting him and it still is he still stand. But I don't know if it's like the Osagi um, Yujimbo Zagi fans will 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 like this one because it's a uh, different from 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 their usual art. But yeah, uh, if you guys gonna notice, uh, my layout is always um like like I always wanted to tell a story from it. So yeah, there's a uh, lots of 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 trial and error. But the planning is the the longer one. It takes you like so many days. Keep coming back by just one thumbnail by just doing these small things and this one is the most difficult one than the drawing so this is like the plan so this is like the piece of the small piece of, of uh, the guardians of the galaxy and it ended up like this I'm showing this small piece and ended up like this two piece so nice. wow. So the planning has always been the longer thing to do than the drawing. The drawing will take you like a day or two, but the 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 planning is the difficult one because you need to draw like like you always have to think like no one do it like that kind of approach. But if you can see a lot of people are always like oh I've, I've seen that one I've seen that one. But in the end you need to really plan carefully that it's gonna be unique from each other so that. It will it will shine and and showcase your 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 work and style. So you always need to plan and keep keep taking a lot of inspiration. Like yeah, that's 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 one thing I do. Like the planning is the difficult one. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. So where are we at with uh, Manix? Looks like he's done. He said uh, he's he's. He's put the artwork down. Oh, here, we'll swing it over to Mannix. Take a look at that one. The Dang. Wow. Yeah, that, uh, that, that's some wall power right there. I'd wow. Say. <laughs> Thank you. Fantastic. I really enjoyed doing zero. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. So what other uh, uh, characters did you get, Mannix? I mean, I, I, I don't know how many you were doing. I forget. I'm doing four. I'm also, I'm excited to do the Snoopy one. Yeah. <laughs> I have a Snoopy, <laughs> Spider-Ham, and then the one from the European comics. Oh, the, uh, the one uh -huh. we got that, okay. Yeah. That was, that was an interesting really, looking character. Yeah. yeah, actually, I'm still researching. <laughs> Well, I know that person said they had some sketches and other drawings in their calf gallery of that same character. So, <laughs> I don't know. Y y yeah. Research yeah, wherever right. you like. <laughs> but the uh, Snoopy is the most challenging one. <laughs> right, right. Well, you're dealing with a, uh, you know, a character everybody knows and loves, but you've yeah. got to put your spin on it, man. It's, that's not going to be easy. Yeah. And I have to think of how I'm going to make it my style. Mm -hmm. Snoopy. So, John, is the Megatron for sale? Yes, sir. Yes, it is. Mm. Should be Ooh. wrapping this up today. It's eight by eight. We well, can put it in, in your, your booth. booth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So your Sunday booth isn't completely uh, populated no, yet. It hasn't been. The, the Saturday has just been populated. The Sunday is the, the other one. All right. Well, if John can get this done, it'll be in there. I, I know we've got uh, some fans out there, so that's a good, always a good thing. Uh, Bill, I think you need to rest. It's going to be a big day. Yeah. I mean, I, I, like I said, I've got some work to review with Maureen before I call it a, 
uh, a night. But uh, but yeah, we are really at that point. We're at the eleven o'clock hour. We've been doing this for a couple hours. So uh, so yeah, this is. I think I love the idea of maybe selling them these through the end of the show next uh, next November. So let's let's plan on doing that, Jiggy. That will be an interesting okay. wrinkle to add into things, and it'll give everybody. Yeah, you because know, the thing is, like, and I think I would still do the same thing we did this year, which was, uh, you know, give out the spreadsheets on the the Monday before uh, the show, because that gives the artists a little bit of a jump start. Because, like we've talked about, we like to guarantee as best we can that the artwork, you know, is going to be shipping, uh, you know, be in the mail within two weeks of the show. So giving the artists uh, up to a week in advance to get started is a, is a good thing, especially when they're doing, you know, two, three, four, sometimes five uh, of these pieces. So uh, yeah, that would, that would be cool. I'm glad Josh, Josh agrees. And uh, Oh, Jiggy, I, cl I clicked on uh, Jiggy when I meant to click on Josh. There we go. Um, but uh, listen, thank you. Thank you to all the artists first and foremost for, you know, having 40 artists work with us on this one. I can't wait to see the, the pieces that uh, they all do. And uh, you know, I'm looking forward to doing the unboxing with you, Jiggy. You know, a, a few looking weeks. Looking forward from now. to that one too. I think Black Bolt's finished. Oh, maybe oh. Can... let's go. Uh, yeah, oh, it's nice. <laughs> yeah, blower. Congrats, JP. <laughs> so... When you don't want to wait for the uh, ink to dry, naturally. Yeah, this is this is uh, the hack. <laughs> sometimes it, 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 it gets smudged. So this is coming handy, the, the blow. You use that for a little hairstyling after you're done <laughs> as well. Yes, yes. So pretty much the this the black bolt this one. The black bolt piece is pretty much done. So nice one, JB. That's awesome. Yeah, I can't wait yeah. to see who uh who got that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh man well this is uh it's, it's fun as always i'm so glad that we started doing these uh you know three sh or two shows ago so this is our third time doing them i mean I, I i enjoy getting to see what everybody does and uh yeah i can't wait to i can't wait to do, see see the unboxings from everybody um I'm, you know with, with some new artists this time around i mean stuff we haven't seen before <laughs> Like with Alex Saviak, I mean, I'm sure he didn't get a Spider Man, but what 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 did he get? What did he do? I want to see it, right? Um, it was fun seeing Bill Morrison stuff. So uh, yeah, this is awesome. JP, you did a fantastic job on this one, man. I, I hope whoever thank gets you, gets this doesn't like scrolls. That'll make him like it even more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that can be Hulk also, if they... <laughs> right? Except for the the ears. Yeah, the pointy ears. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I'm going to call it, everybody. We're going to, you know, this is a great way to kick off the show. As everybody knows, uh, tomorrow, 11 a.m., Comic Art Live opens for premium members. At 1 p.m., it opens for everyone else. So, uh, you know, keep that in mind. The, the main panel start at 3 o'clock tomorrow with uh, Felix and Nick Klein are doing a panel at 3 o'clock. And then uh, I've got a panel with Dennis Cowan and a uh, new artist, that is part of the uh, milestone initiative. So I'll be talking with them at four. And uh, what else do I got here? Other than that, I, well, 9 p.m. next comic art. Hey, that's right, 9 p.m. next comic art. Absolutely, that's gonna that's that's an all sales show, everybody. We do an art drop. I don't know how, how many pieces do you think we're gonna drop tomorrow? Uh, night 20, 20, 20, 20 pieces tomorrow. Yeah, that's good. So yeah, that'll be a you know that won't keep us up too late. I mean that'll you know that might be an hour hour and a half show, but that'll be. A lot of fun. We get to see 20 new artworks, maybe something we saw today too. And um, outside of that, yeah, I've got Paulo Rivera on Sunday at one o'clock. He's got five, five of those four by sixes, and he's doing a daredevil, and they'll all be auctioned off. I know Jiggy's going to be there. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't missed the Paulo panel. So I'm yeah. a sucker for Paulo's work too. And I, I, you know, and I, I just love his stuff, but I've already got like six, you know, I've gotten six pieces from him from shows, but uh, it's so I'll awesome. Give, to see I'll work. give others a chance. <laughs> yeah. He's not doing any Spider-Man this time, G maybe next time, but uh, all right, everybody. Well, like I said, I've got Thanks, some more bro. work to do. Thank Thanks, you. Everyone. Uh, Thank you so much. Thanks everyone. Enjoy it. Bye guys. Thank, Thank you, Bill. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.